also from the previous video on the GE3-5269A where I mentioned this guy. This is the 3-5268A. It is indeed a super radio. And the whole unit is an absolute beast. Probably one of the best sounding boxes I've heard. And I do reference Wiki Boombox a lot for my information, but I also have a lot of information on my own, and I really need to start, uh, see if I can contribute to that site. Um, a lot of research on things on my own, and figure things out, but most of my collection is General Electric between 1979, maybe, maybe that one I'm thinking of is even a 78, through 85, which, is why this is a rather unique box because this is from 1985, like mid-1985. It's not as old as you'd think. And before we get started, I'm going to mention some things about General Electric boom boxes. They had some real winners during this era. And they were also unique in the boxes themselves in uh, who made them. GE did make their own. This is one of them. If you find a General Electric box and it's made in Hong Kong or Singapore and the FCC ID reads AKJ, that's made by General Electric themselves. The Singapore facility has a lot of, you'll see like other things like their clock radios or other uh, electronic equipment come out of there. So yeah, I noticed a lot of them came out of Singapore and some came out of Hong Kong Hence the previous box, the 69A, I demonstrated that came out of Hong Kong. But they also did OEM stuff too. And I don't view the OEM stuff as bad either because it was just this top notch and unique. The 3-6035A. Those of you that are familiar with this box or own one know it's a sleeper. It's very loud, it has a ton of bass, and it's not that large but it's a total sleeper and very well made. Digital tuning and all, and that's 1983, so this was an expensive unit. This is where it gets interesting. There's two suffixes for this box, 3-6035A and B. The A version was OEM'd by Funai. Not to be confused, it's the same company, but vintage Funai is completely different. I've mentioned that in a lot of my other videos but they were top-notch back then, and you wouldn't even have known them. <laughs> but GE did OEM quite a few models, and a lot of them were unique from Funai. The FCC ID will read ADT, just like the security company. You might not find the exact model on the FCC uh, database. You just need the first three letters and numbers to help you identify it. Now, the B version of this box, which is what this box actually is, the B version was made by GE Singapore, the same facility as this box right here. So that just gives you a good idea here. Like, and like I say, you saw some other videos, GE OEM some things from Sharp, but the models were completely unique to GE. But that was only like three models. And two of them were microcassette TV units. One was the Omnitech. So that aside, okay, so yeah, back to this. This is from 1985. And, wow, I didn't know what to expect when I got this. It is a complete sleeper, too. So before I get into this unit, um, since I started collecting these boom boxes, this is the third one to show up on eBay. The first one to show up was like $500. And the auction ended. I was really tempted to get that one, but somebody bought it or the auction got taken down or whatever. The second time it popped up, I didn't have the funds for it at the time. This is the third one to pop up. It, had, it was at the good price with good shipping costs. It was in mint condition. So I got it. And the fourth one, there was a fourth one right after this one. And this is where it gets odd. Like, this is, 
All the other ones that show up on eBay, the, I never see the auction end. It's like the seller cancels the auction or something happens behind the scenes. But somehow I managed to get a hold of this one. I'm really glad I did. So it is rare, but I'm not going to say the rarest one because let's just say I did manage to obtain one of the rarest GE boom boxes. And it happened right after I mentioned it in one of my previous videos. Two days after I released the video on YouTube, it happened. Uh, that video will be coming later on, but I am very happy with that one too. <laughs> but on to this. So on Wikiboombox, I got some things I could contribute, such as it's mentioning there are no service literature or advertisements for this unit. Well, this on here, the main focus is the 3-6025A, which I did a video on, link in the upper right corner. But if you go down below here, and this article is from 1985, it's just one, the sensational range of portable sound systems from General Electric. There's the 3-5268, a giant of a power box with detachable speakers. No, nah, they aren't lying. But there it is. Try my best not to get light in there. But yep, there's the advertisement for it. Small. The next to it, you have the um, 3 6200. I have that model too. I still have to do a video on it. That was GE's first dual cassette unit. And it's from 1984. And we'll get into that later. Dual cassettes at that time wasn't like the later ones where it was ubiquitous. This was totally different. So we'll get into that unit at some point later on. But yeah, it's just funny that they made the mini box the focus here and not this beast. Yeah, I'm going to get that. Um, it's supposed to be a poster out of a magazine. So I'm going to get it framed and put on the wall. So back to this unit here. It's not a huge box. It's a midsize. Uh, speaker woofers are five and a quarter inch. But again, don't let that fool you. And the unit itself... Of everything together weighs 18 pounds it is a tank has a very large power transformer and everything so start with the speakers here five and a quarter inch onkyo woofers has a mid-range two inch mid-range and a piezo tweeter behind that vent and a round base port for both and that makes i mean when I got this, I was floored by it. It does sound like a subwoofer. And last time I had that, I had that thing cranking. I was had it up on 7, 8 out of 10. And bass, maybe, I have it turned up somewhere. Let's do it low volume. But I had the bass maybe just a tiny bit up like that. And it was just low end bass. is just awesome on this unit. Which leads me to another thing. You go to the top here. Yeah, 5 watts per channel. It's very modestly rated. It's probably far more than that. I mean, the this thing sounds like a 10 watt per channel system. Proper RMS watts. I mean, I mean, it was so loud it was actually starting to hurt being near it when I had it like on 7, 8 out of 10 here. And this thing was giving like standalone stereo receivers a run for their money in my opinion. Which is why you can detach the speakers and have a kick-ass home system, too. So, back to the top. Five watts per channel. Yeah, they're being way too modest there. Then you have your equalizer frequency range. And it is accurate. You can boost it by 10 dB each way. Boost or cut. Yeah, it's on there for decoration. But, hey, it's accurate. Unlike some GPXs. Three-way speaker. Yeah, I'd say there's not too many three-way units out there. It sounds great. So, and then not only is it a kick-ass unit, it has the super radio. And as you know, super radio is good for DXing. Hence, you got your AFC switch, tuner mode, FM stereo, FM, AM, of course, a power button. Record level control, left and right. This does not have automatic level control at all. My other GE boxes I got, usually I have a switch for it down here to enable a, a automatic level control or turn it off and do it manually. This one's strictly manual. Balance control, volume control, 
tuning, FM stereo indicator. Then you come down here, you have your line level auxiliary, magnetic phono, radio, tape, and it has, this was typical during this time frame. It has normal and metal tape selection, no chrome. But that was typical during this time. A lot of manufacturers did that. But even on a normal tape, it sounds amazing on recording. Um, I really, that's why we need to find a service manual for this because I want to know the specifications on this deck. It, wow, that's all I'm going to say. This thing is amazing. And, you know, metal. So obviously I can't record on type 2 chrome with this. The bias in current and everything is going to be wrong. But for tape playback, just push it in. It'll have the same equalization for chrome. And you have battery tuning and level for your meters and Dolby B noise reduction, which is where it gets interesting here. This is 1985, and pretty much everybody has been has went to using LEDs for a VU meter. No, this has an analog VU meter, and I love that. It, I love analog VU meters, let me just say that. Nothing wrong with LEDs, but there's a something special about having analog VU meters. Not only are they analog, but they're actually lighted. Yeah, I polish this thing up with Novus Plastic Polish, and it's, everything's reflecting off of it, so I'm having trouble trying to get this image here. But, yeah, battery on the left, tuning on the right, which is good for the super radio portion. And your bottom part is your VU meter with your Dolby reference mark. Coming down to the tape deck, Dolby system, soft touch, so it's a feather touch deck, cushion eject, Typical layout here. Uh, when you see when I open this up, this is the Tanishin mechanism, but before they became ubiquitous and the cheap ones. This one is the full feather touch system with music location system, music search, whatever you want to call it. And driven by three belts one belt for auto stop, one belt for the idler, and a big flat belt with a heavy flywheel for the capstan. So yeah, Tanishin used to make some good stuff. This would have been the last year for it too, 1985. Yep, very clean. I cleaned everything up. So, has Music Location System 3. So you can skip forward or back three songs, your standard tape counter. And a very large and nice five-band graphic equalizer. So 60 hertz, 250 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz, and 16 kilohertz. And you have left and right microphone in with a center remote jack, stereo headphone jack. In my opinion, a GE went out with a bang with this model here. I mean, 1985, I mean, they just did it. Made a kick-ass unit, and then, unfortunately, that was, that was it. I'm well aware there's a couple, two other extremely rare models from the same time frame, especially the $600 one with the CD player only, but I'm not familiar with that one, so I can't comment too much on it. But either way, this unit here, wow. So you come around to the back. Both speakers are indeed sealed. That is not a vent on the bomb, that's just the molding. Because this same back you may observe on some other boom boxes from the same time frame, especially the cord wrap and everything in this little part here, you'll see on some other units, all the way up until I think 1987, I wanna say. But by 87, Thompson took over and then you know, 85 is like the real last year for some of the best boom boxes on pretty much any brand. On the back, your AB oscillator switch, your speaker jacks, magnetic phono and ground, line level auxiliary in. And being the super radio, it gives you an AM antenna terminal, an FM antenna terminal, that's ground. 300 ohm impedance and your input DC 12 
information, FCCID, AKJ. And, of course, date code. 17th week of 1985. Yep, it's a 1985 model. Also has a rather long antenna. Since the speaker is much heavier, this has a much beefier mechanism on this. But it has a nice spring-loaded release mechanism. Check this. Then the speaker's detached, just like that. And with metal pieces. As you know, after this... All three-piece boomboxes, the detachable speakers were just cheap. Yeah, and I also like how they label where the speaker jacks go right here. It's pretty cool. So now we'll take a look at um, what I had to do to this. I mean, I do my typical novicing of the entire cabinet and everything, but it's mainly the tape deck that needed some attention. It mostly worked, except it would not go into record. And, of course, there's a belt problem, as you'll see. But everything else, just uh, typical cleaning the controls and observing what's inside before putting it back together. Let's check it out. So when I first got it, it mostly worked, but now it looks like it has a new issue. It's probably due to either lubrication or if something needs cleaned. I don't know. Right now, the automatic stop isn't working. Oh, it, now it worked. Now, it did not work when I went into rewind. I'm going to have to investigate. It's supposed to kick out on rewind. But that said, it is very strong. Lots of torque. And when going into record, something just binds up and it doesn't want to stop. Like you hit stop and the motor's still running and I have to play with it. So we'll investigate that. Again, this is as found. So this is what it looks like upon first opening it up. It has a TAM radio transformer. A rather hefty one at that. That's where a lot of weight comes from. Very nice and large electrolytic. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, yeah, 4700 microfarad. Yeah, it's pretty beefy. But the main unit is, yeah, it's definitely top tier. Uh, this whole bottom board is mostly for the tape deck. There's the amplifier, the heat sink. And the top board's just as equally as large, but it's definitely a super radio because look at that AM antenna. That thing is huge. And there's your t tuning capacitor. I mean, that thing is huge too. I'm going to measure that AM antenna. Eight inch calipers, and that's it goes all the way to the end. Approximately, I could barely hold it. Let's see what that is in inches. Yep, eight inch. Yeah, top is uh, very clean. That was directly below the vent. See, I gotta just take my little paintbrush there and finish sweeping. But very clean. Yeah, it's tuner has its own separate board in this thing. All right, I just cleaned all the buttons and switches this thing has. The CRC QD electronic cleaner and. That leaves no residue, but it is fast drying, so you gotta work quick. And that brings me to my next point. This tuning capacitor here makes a lot of noise, like a dirty pot noise, but it's not. Being that this Q, uh, CRC stuff dry is clear, it doesn't leave a residue, I'm gonna spray it down and um, adjust the tuner, see if that clears it up. We'll see when I turn it back on. So this now brings us to our next step. Let's see what's going on with this cassette. All right, everything's turning. I, I'd never see these, this transport of bad belts. All right, pause. All right, let's do a um, music search. There's the Electromagnet. This doesn't actually have a solenoid in this one. It's actually just an electromagnet that holds up, holds it together. So, yeah, it's in fast forward. I have to manually stop it though. There we go. Now let's see. If I hit rewind, it should automatically kick out because nothing's turning on the take up reel. 
it just probably just needs to be used. How long has this thing been sitting for? But now, the problem I was having, let's see what happens when I put it in the record. Okay, I see what's happening here. Since that main cam gear is driven off the flywheel, whenever we go in the record, it doesn't quite complete its cycle, so there's a belt slipping. That doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, though. I'm going to first try cleaning it with rubber cleaner. And uh, if that doesn't help, then unfortunately for that, I don't have any these. I might have a skinny flat belt like this. I'll have to see. But yeah, that's the problem. The belt's slipping, so it's not completing its cycle. But the reason why I thought everything was working, the take-up reel, as I mentioned, is driven off of another belt, and now it's spinning fine, which is that one right in the middle of your screen there. Well, this one made a complete liar out of me in terms of the belts, okay? Okay, uh, let me grab the belts I changed. The belt that drives the idler had a small nick in it i noticed and i did not do that and when i gently tugged on it it broke so either belt bad the belt that drives the auto stop mechanism is still fine but i'm already tearing this thing apart i changed it too this is the main drive belt to the flywheel it's very thin in terms of thick thickness i'm trying to describe it. like it's not the width it's how thick the belt is a while back i ordered a bunch of flat belts good flat belts i think it's from marvac i should say i got lucky the tolerances are really tight but i had it was the exact size and i'll show you what I mean by tight tolerances in the middle of your screen is the flat belt on the flywheel observe look how close it is to touching the bracket here. <laughs> I mean, that was close. Other thing is, look at where the belt is in relation to the idler right there. Idler clutch. It is like really, really close, but luckily it is not rubbing. That was my main concern. And the auto stop mechanism belt is right there. I, that got changed out. So good. So here's fast forward. No rubbing noises, so it just clears. I got lucky there. Rewind. Okay, here's playback. Now, whenever you go into record, what was happening was the old belt just didn't have enough grip to it, even though it was tight, you know, about the same t tightness as uh, this one. It was slipping because it required a lot of torque to move it because there's the arm for it and it's on a spring and you can see how it's moving the cord play switch and that even just doing it with my finger here requires a lot of push and it's just slipping at that last little bit and that's why it was not engaging so now i'm going to hold a record tab you can see it right here i'm moving it out of the way Press record and it should go right in here. Click when it engages. If I can do this, there's the click. It's engaged. Perfect. And you come around here. That's turning. Oop. I go into pause. But the thing is, when I hit stop before, it wouldn't stop. The motor was still running. If I tried to go into rewind, it'd make a squealing sound because it's partially engaged. So yeah, this is the first one I ever really had to change a belt on. Now, fortunately I had to cut a lot of the cable ties because this was really tight. You can see this is loose, so I gotta redo all that. But tape counter belt is good. I would change that, but in order to do that, I gotta disassemble this whole thing because of how it's mounted. So I'm not even gonna bother. I checked that it. it's nice and tight still and tape counters don't require a lot of torque. It'll be fine. All right, all the controls are cleaned. So really the next step is I want to, let's see, I'll cable tie all this back together, neaten up the wiring. Then we gotta do motor tape speed adjustment, clean everything. Like I usually sand the pinch rollers regardless. 
give it a new, reveal a new layer. Make sure it works, make sure it doesn't eat any tapes. Get the azimuth done, and um, I didn't find anything else wrong with this. We can button it up after this. So, working on the tape deck now. It is actually pretty clean here. It's obviously been used because you see the iron oxide build up on the capstan. But otherwise, it's pretty clean. Yeah, very little coming off. But the big thing is always the uh, capstan and pinch roller, so I need to stop and take care of that. Okay, judging by this capstan right here, I highly doubt this deck has ever been cleaned. Yeah, it's almost off. I got like a little line showing there. Might be a little out of focus because I can't really do this. Not good. Okay, that's, that's it, off of that. I have no idea how, but the tape speed was 90, 999 to 10, 1001 hertz. It's dead on, and I haven't even touched the tape speed despite the belt changes. And there's proof right there, because I have didn't even break the seal yet. But watch this, you know how it's a pretty good sealed cabinet. I mean, this is the base port. Watch the woofer. In and out. <laughs> so I did end up taking one of the speakers apart to check it out. Onkyo woofer, 10 watts at 4 ohms. It's rated 4. Look at that huge magnet on that beast. And it has a circular base port, the mid-range driver, and the tweeter. The back of it has sound deadening insulation and a little baffle right there as well. Okay, so just like the other super radio units, I'm in here. I'm not going to play with the antenna much. I'm just going to point it to where I get the best reception. I think it's towards Pittsburgh, which is right here. And we'll just go through just like that. Which I'm just saying because, of course, I can obtain, probably, I could probably, probably pull in some very far away stations, hooking an external antenna to it, playing around with it, but we're not going to do that for this video. It'll be way too long. So power on and now I'm going to dim the lights so we can look at the very nice uh, lit VU meters and let's do it and I'm also switching microphones because as I found with like three-way speakers if you put the other microphone I don't really have a good place to stick the microphones like right in front of it it's going to pick up the wrong like one of the speakers and it's not going to sound very good so we'll just do it like this low volume I'll just do this see how much bass we can get out of it but FM mode, I was doing that weird skipping like this before. To bring science and the humanities, and the listeners who support this NPR station. Include the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. Supporting books, radio. When they hold them to the light, you can see right.
969.com. It's Rob Allen, and these are the cars. Nickel, right point, wrister, fan, has it hop. Whoa, that one almost got. But yeah, even with this out without playing with the antenna, and it's kind of uh, we're getting a winter storm here, so Life Pack is on sale now. Mix and match five games of your new to 17. Eighth decade, as is Al Pacino. So the times they are. Oh, he's a sentry. They've been posted all along the road to keep watch. pick up a bunch of very weak stations. Like I said, I'm sure if I play with the antenna or hooked an external to it, it'd be great. Pull on even more. Is the official security partner of the Super business. radio wasn't so just limited to, to this all the action on the Penguin couple radio, radio models. And we would have them doing to us, and, and indeed we would like others to With some five on five hockey. It's and we hit the end of the FM scale. Now, as you saw how large the AM antenna is, without adjusting the unit or doing anything special, let's see what we can pull in. Hopefully it won't pick up too much electrical noise. I know, I apologize for my camera uh, work. I'm trying to be higher than that. But I just um, wanted to um, let people know. Yeah, we're not even moving the tuning meter, but we're pulling them in. It's very quiet. That's a dynamic. Those kids are still going to be in this. He was not found guilty. But Lizzie is See how a loud it gets when a strong she station hits. Democrat. She believes in the system and her committee. I, I don't know. I mean, you would have to have. So who knows how far away those other stations that were when it was clearly picking them up, even though it was barely moving the meter. <laughs> Extension in the clear 
as well, and no bridge problems to report in and out of South Jersey. In fact, the Atlantic City ah, Expressway 55, the Jersey Turnpike, and 295 are looking good. Now, in Cherry Hill, there's some road work on Route 70. This is both ways east to Springdale Road over in Cherry Hill. That left lane is blocked until 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. Mass Transit is running on or close to schedule. Next update is in less than 10 minutes. I'm Kyrie Moses. All right, thanks, Kyrie. And now, AccuWeather meet. He took me to the Civic Arena to watch the closed circuit fight of Muhammad Ali when he fought Jimmy Ellis at the Houston Astrodome. You can hear and, how you know, they're good going to be playing the, the football championship in Houston tonight, and all day different people being interviewed there and what have you. And all I kept thinking about was my dad. Let me ask you this. Schematically, as a defensive player, think about this more openly and honestly. And just the conversation we're having today is having a lot. And you young people listening are parents of children. Limited income constrained, but employed. And that's really who we're seeing at food pantries people who are working, um, sometimes two jobs. In the college football championship. And how a comedian, and uh, the comedian's name is Joe Coy. And I know he is. Dot com slash Joe. Food fans will get a free medical consultation. The school shipping gets around to the floor. Awesome. That's quite an insurrection, where the insurrectionists don't have arms, where the insurrectionists didn't use knives, or, or when it was under attack in Arizona. None of that matter. The media playbook. It's the same playbook today. The dry one was 1964. But even then, the media were at least concerned about being labeled partisan, concerned about being labeled Anyways, I mean, I'm not going to wait around all night for listening for the station's um, call letters and stuff. But at least right there, we're picking up New Jersey. And and stations were barely even moving the tuning needle here and pulling them in. Remember any other time I did AM demonstrations, it could barely pull anything in because of the you know modern stuff, electrical noise. and But you know, just imagine if I were to, you know, actually try to pull in more stations, hook an external antenna to it, move the unit around, you know, position this antenna. But let me try one more thing. Let's go to 1020. Get through to the other side into the camp of their dream. But just remember, they're entertainers, yes, but they're human beings too. And also, Cat Williams took a lot of uh, courage for what he did and it just so didn't let you understand KK. why this Hollywood still matters. No, much you, no matter what you think, you get 15 million views. That's uh, in clicks and likes and what have you. That's pretty impressive. It's good. We'll take a break. We'll it's come back. Uh, we'll talk to you in just a couple of moments on KDKA. Stay with yep, me. Yep, KDK. The people you know. The news you trust. Real Pittsburgh. News Radio KDKA. The possibility of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're... For a limited time, you can get up to a $1,000 prepaid right, card with a qualifying gig bundle when normal. you switch to Comcast Business, the company with the largest, fastest, reliable network. Yep, you heard that right. $1,000 back. Something extra for your company. From the company that powers more businesses than anyone else. So if you're a small business owner, don't wait. Call or go online to learn about the $1,000 bonus today. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. 
ends 2-21-24. New customers with Gigabit Extra Internet, Security Edge, One Voice Mobility Line, and Connection Pro with three-year agreement. Other restrictions apply. Call or go online for details. Hey, what's up? It's Bubba. Here to talk to you about Dan Vishoff and the PA Hypnosis Center up in Warrendale. Dan Vishoff does one-on-one -on -one hypnosis, and that's why it works. When you go into PA Hypnosis Center, you're meeting... with the largest, fastest, reliable network. Yep, you heard that right. 1,000 back. Something extra for your company. From the company that powers more businesses than anyone else. So if you're a small business owner, don't wait. Call or go online to learn about the $1,000 bonus today. Comcast Business. Powering possibilities. Ends 2-21-24. New customers with Gigabit Extra Internet, Security Edge, One Voice Mobility Line, and Connection Pro with three-year agreement. Other restrictions apply. Call or go online for details. Hey, what's up? It's Bubba. Here to talk to you about Dan Vishoff and the PA Hypnosis Center up in Warrendale. Dan Vishoff does one-on-one -on -one hypnosis, and that's why it works. When you go into... Okay, okay, so that was cassette record operation off the radio. I don't even know what station that was. And... Typical of a lot of these three-piece units, there are no built-in microphones, so you have to use the externals. And I had a record volume set for five, and it pretty much matched the um, audio level of the tuner. So, let's play a tape I recorded. Type on another machine, but for demonstration purposes, type to Chrome. And... Here we go. Ask Alexa to play 94.5 3WS on iHeartRadio. Uh, so on that note, we'll conclude this video on the GE 3-5268A from 1985. A super radio boombox. It looks amazing. It sounds amazing. 
It's a beast. And I love it. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.